What's up guys? Thanks for stopping back by the channel, The Auto Shop Life. So, the end of year is fast approaching. 2019, to me, flew by quicker than it should have. Definitely could have got a lot more done this year, but as a shop owner, going through my end of the year numbers, crunching numbers, all that stuff, just wanted to get into a quick business side, talk about keeping up with the times. Check it out. Shut up and sit down. Alright guys, so what I mean about keeping up with the times, you know, at the end of every year, obviously being a business owner, you got to get your tax forms prepped and all that stuff, get all the information to, you know, whether you have an accountant, you do it yourself, whatever, you got to kind of get everything together that you use between write-offs, you know, the stuff you bought, equipment, your depreciations, you know, the stuff you're going to depreciate, you know, whether or not you use a car for work, your work clothes, you know, everything. For me, obviously, the tools I buy and all that stuff, but it brings up a good point, keeping up with the times. You know, I realized this year, you know, was definitely a good year for us here at the shop, but, you know, us as shop owners and technicians, you know, keeping up with the times of these manufacturers, you know, these cars, they're getting more advanced, you know, the, this, these tools, they're getting more advanced. And it just brings up a good point where, you know, being a shop owner, you got to make sure you stay on top of that stuff. I mean, all the way down to, you know, keeping your scanners up to date, you know, keep it, making sure you have, you know, that new tool that came out for that car that, you know, one specific car. And you guys out there, you guys know some of the ones I'm talking about, some of these crazy fasteners that, uh, you know, have been coming out for the last four or five years. You know, you got to make sure, especially for a shop like me, you know, the newer cars, you know, obviously, guys that work at the dealership are going to see those cars first. You know, it's not like I got 2020s pulling in here, 2019 cars pulling in here. You know, maybe I'll get an occasional oil change here and there or something like that if it's got a high mileage. But for the most part, I don't see those cars for, you know, maybe two to three years down the road between, you know, when their warranty expired, um, you know, the dealership is basically they're out of, you know, extended warranty. Basically, when they're out of uh, vehicle manufacturer warranty, you know, then they'll start seeing them in, uh, here at the shop, and then I'm sure, you know, most independent shops, you know, it's not like brand new cars are pulling into the shop. But it gets me to say, you know, this year I'm definitely looking at the new refrigerant I'll be using, the one two three four YF. Um, definitely be looking at getting one of those this upcoming year. Um, Got to get that in the budget. The couple other things that I did buy this year, just keeping up with the times between, you know, the timing belt kits that uh, you may or may not have been out, but, you know, I'm starting to see the cars into the shop now. I've got to keep up with that. Obviously, my scanner updated. You know, I use more than one scanner, so between keeping up with the, the snap-on, the launch, you know, my Alltel, making sure all that stuff's up to date. You know, as a shop owner, I got to make sure that stuff's taken care of. So me, anybody else that's using them out there is getting the latest and greatest technology out there. They're not using old technology and old data, you know, trying to trying to make things work on a new, newer car. But it all costs money. It all comes at a cost. So, you know, I, I just kind of put it out there. You know, it's something that I don't usually think about. But, you know, the money we spent this year pretty much just keeping up with technology you know, it's a thing to think about. You know, yes, I could use it as a write-off, and, and yes, I didn't fall behind, so for two, at the end of 2020, it's not like you have to pay double, but if you start slipping up as a shop owner, you know, next thing you know, you're a few years behind, it could potentially cost you, you know, 20, 30 grand, you know, depending on how far behind you are, or might as well, at some point, if a scanner is not worth updating, I, I actually have a scanner that is uh, 2018 and it's really not even worth updating between the four updates that snap on you'd have to get from snap on it, it costs the updates cost more than the scanner you know so it's something to think about you know you start falling behind on technology it'll cost you more in the long run as opposed to just keeping up with it during the times but the big one next year is obviously going to be you know the new the new ac system they're using now got to get a machine for that do I get a dual one? What do I do with this? It's another equipment to store. You know, it's going to cost me money to store it now. It's going to cost money for buying the actual refrigerant. Um, but I, I mean, I, I think it, I think it deserved a video. I think this is a good point. Obviously, bringing it up, bringing this stuff up, knowing that I'm about about to buy. You know, it's it's good investment in your company. It's good it's good tax write offs. Good for everything else. But keeping up with it, it's not just that. The tools too. You know, like I said, I've probably spent I've probably spent. 
five, six grand, maybe ten grand on just keeping up with the tools, the technology. You know, yes, there's some tools that I bought this year that weren't necessarily, you know, newer, but I've bought tools that I already have that are either upgrades also. You know, you may have that same tool and you know people have may have seen my toolbox tour saying you got doubles and triples but that's the thing they're upgrades you know you know using the same tool it might have worked years ago but you know they got a better version now or they got a faster version or they got a more efficient version you know so you got to keep up with the times no sense in using a wrench from the 1920s when they have you know the super wrench 2.0 2000 that does the the same job but maybe quicker faster more efficiently and that's what it's all about you want to be quicker faster more efficient make sure you're with the times you know what's going on and know how to use that new tool correctly for that new manufacturer that came out on this car that you know there's a better procedure than the year pre prior so and it all cost it all comes at a cost so just wanted to put a quick one out there for you guys you know obviously you aspiring shop owners or you shop owners that are already out there and even techs in general mechanics in general it's all going to cost us money to keep up with the times. You know, it, it, you could have every tool you ever need for your job, um, and and be just fine. You have get the job done just fine with the tools you already own. But you know, there may be another tool out there. You know, keeping up with the technology and the times. There's probably another tool out there that could get it done a little bit faster. You know, a little better for the time it's in. You know, get jobs done more efficiently, and not just talking hardware tools. I'm talking the software part of it too, the technology part of it too, like your updates and scanners and pico scopes and, and information you know even even some of the mitchell and identifix and all that stuff you know that's all technology you got to pay for it's all technology you got to keep up with you know keeping up with the times but want to throw a quick one out there for you guys as always like comment subscribe catch you guys in the next one signing out